Alright, so a lot of you guys have been asking me to show you how to make some cool anime style shots like this. Using VFX, the internet, and your very own crusty PC, right? Okay, cool, let's get into it. Okay, so it's no surprise to hear that the shot was made in the 3D software for the most part, with the main character Todoroki being a 3D model. Thus, the first step to take when making a shot like this is to get the 3D models you want to use in your scene. Now, one could do this by meticulously modeling and texturing detailed assets so that they fit perfectly into the scene, but the easy way to do this is to just... Boom! Ooh. Bam! Oh. Bop! Pow! Oh! Alright, so the first step of animating is to rig your model. Luckily for me, my model already came rigged. Nice. However, if your model isn't rigged, I recommend just uploading it to Mixamo's Auto Rigger, moving the little circles into place, and watching it spin around a couple times before downloading it and calling it a day. So anyway, once you got your model rigged, the next step is to animate it. Of course for me, since I'm basing my VFX off this shot for My Hero Academia, it was as simple as looking at the shot and using it as a guide for my own animation. A good trick here is to use the noise modifiers to add a level of randomness to the animation, which is a completely original idea that I came up with myself. Alright, so shading can get really hard and complicated very quickly until you eventually end up with an important note setup like this where you're not even sure what each note does anymore because your brain feels like it's been shipped through a blender. So I prefer to keep it simple. Just simply plug in the texture that came with your model into the principal BSDF for the base color. Then grab a normal map off the internet that best fits the aforementioned texture. For example, for the cloth parts of the texture I just used the jean texture as the normal map, and for the metallic parts I just used their breast and metal texture. And there's the face. But don't worry, there's a pretty easy way to do this as well. All you're going to want to do is go to Google and download an image of someone who looks like your character. For me, this meant typing My Hero Academia costumes into my search engine, looking for the one that made me laugh the most, and downloading it. And then you can toss it into your compositor of choice, isolate the face, and add some embellishments so that it looks like your desired character. Then find a head model off the internet, take the texture you just created, and use projection mapping to go... Perfect. Now you got a realistic face texture in your 3D model that, from a distance, almost looks like a real face. Also, you could grab an HDRI off of HDRI Haven and toss it into the scene for some realistic lighting. Alright, so if your character looks like mine, you may have realized by now that he's gonna need some hair. Now, there's a lot of tutorials on how to do this in Blender, so I'm not going to get into the specifics of it. However, just know that hair simulations take a lot of time to get right. For me, this was particularly hard because I had to figure out a way to get the hair naturally standing up on end due to the forces of the wind without it looking like Todoroki was just a knockoff Guy Fieri. Eventually, however, after a lot of trial and error, I just settled for a wind force pushing upward, a head wiggle to get the hair moving, and that was pretty much it. Then, after you textured the hair using the BSDF known as Blender, you can make some finishing touches, hit the render button to render the animation overnight, and try to go to sleep while your computer's fans produces a sound equivalent to 20 jet engines taking off. So as you can see, we're still missing a few things in our render, that being the ice, the fire, and the background. So after dropping the shot into your compositor of choice, track the scene, download an image off of Google, drop it into the background with a little color grading, and say, eh, good enough. Now for the fire, it could get pretty complicated, but essentially you're just gonna wanna... In other words, you're just gonna wanna add a lot of layers of nonsense until you get something that eventually works. The same applies to the ice side, where you can add ice stock footage elements, thanks production crate, along with several layers of glow, smoke, and distortion. Essentially, the goal is to make the scene visually dense enough so that the audience doesn't notice how crappy the scene actually is, but not too much so so that the audience can't understand what's going on at all. Anyway, with all that, you should get something like this, which looks pretty good. But to make it a little more energetic, I personally like to take the shake effect, apply it to the layer, and go... And with that, we're pretty much done. Here's the final shot again. Uh, yay, we're done. Alright, that was a lot of work. I'm gonna go to bed. Bye.